What's up guys, I'm Jake Bo, a data engineer at a big tech company in Silicon Valley. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can plan your life using data combined with research coming from top universities like Stanford and even used in big tech companies like Google that led them to success. At the end, I'm gonna share an app I built for planning your life and the number one tip that you can use for setting yourself up for success. The only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. You know who said that? Helen Keller. She was deaf and blind. So that's saying something, maybe in sign language. So take it as a sign. The big idea for planning your life is to start big and then get smaller. Let me show you what I mean by that with this kind of framework for planning. First step is to start with things that you wanna do in your whole lifetime. Just think about it for a bit and pick three things. Don't spend too much time on it. You know if you really think about it, you can only pick three it'll probably come down to something pretty simple like have a happy family start a successful business or just to be as happy as possible if you're not sure what you want to do in life keep watching and if you're not sure where to write it down keep watching the next step is to cut that time period your whole life in half in this time period come up with three things that you want to do in the first half of your life that you think will lead you to achieving those goals that you have for your lifetime the longer period. For example, if one of your goals is to raise a happy family in the first half of your life, you might want to have a goal centered around finding a significant other or maybe saving up enough money to send your kids to college. Then cut the goals for the first half of your life in half and repeat the process. That is set goals for the first quarter of your life that you think will help you achieve the goals you set for the first half of your life. You can repeat this recursively until you get down to setting goals for about one year or maybe three to five years. I hope we are out there on Mars, the moons of Jupiter, traveling frequently throughout the solar system and in artificial intelligence. Um, I think all of this is possible within 50 years. The reason you don't want to get too specific about the really long-term goals is mainly because at the rate of change in the world, we really don't know exactly what the world is going to look like in five years, much less 60 or 70 years down the road. Once you get down to planning for about three years, this is where you can repeat the process and get more specific as the time periods get shorter. I have three big tips that can help here. First tip is for if you don't know what you want to do. This is where I'd recommend an idea that comes from two university professors, one from Stanford and one from Berkeley. Hello everyone, uh, I'm here to help you design your life. Design thinking is something we've been working on uh, at the D School and in the School of Engineering for over 50 years. And it's an innovation methodology, works on products, works on services. But I think the most interesting design problem is your life. They looked at all the quantitative research about positive psychology, what makes people fulfilled, as well as the research about design, which is heavily used in the tech industry, and wrote a book called How to Design Your Life. One of the main takeaways is that people always say to follow your passion. But if you're like me, you have a few passions. So what they recommend is to come up with just a few scenarios, three ways that your life could go over the next few years. For me, that might be staying at my current job, quitting to start a tech company, or maybe being a full-time influencer or YouTuber. Then they recommend prototyping those ideas. Maybe you're in high school or you haven't picked a major in college. Have a one-year goal to talk to five people who are already in the field and ask them what it's like. Then you'll be more confident about your decisions. That's gonna have a big impact on how you spend the next three to five years. And if you need a good tool for organizing your goals and writing them down, I'll share that tool I use in just a bit, which leads me to the next step. And that is, I think everyone is familiar with one year goals. These may also be known as New Year's resolutions. A lot of time we just think of something kind of random that we might wanna do over the next year. But I think if you start with longer term goals, and then get shorter and shorter, your one-year goals should be pretty easy to think of. And this is where you can even introduce a couple of concepts for creating your goals. The first is the concept of a SMART goal. If you don't know, SMART is an acronym that stands for what your goal should be. Specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. I know a lot of people have already heard of this, but it can be good to get a refresher. Specific means that you should be able to describe what it will look like when you achieve your goal. Measurable means that you can measure whether or not you achieved your goal, and importantly, while you're working towards your goal, whether or not you're on track to meet your goal in time. 
actionable is kind of self-explanatory. It means that it should be within your means to take action towards the goal. Realistic means that it should be something that isn't completely crazy and is actually possible. Maybe avoid saying make a million dollars in one year and have something more like save a certain amount. But if making a million dollars is realistic for you in one year, then let me know in the comments because we should link up. Time bound means that your goal should have a deadline. And obviously in this case, it would be one year. The second concept for planning one year and shorter period goals is the idea of OKRs. OKR stands for objectives and key results. An example might be, I wanna grow a successful YouTube channel who has a community of subscribers that help each other achieve goals. Very meta, I know. The objective here can be broken down into a successful YouTube channel measured by the number of views that has a community of subscribers measured by number of subscribers with a community that helps each other measured by the number of comments or the number of posts in a related Facebook group. With these two pieces, an objective and key results, you can measure number one, if you achieved your goal by the deadline, and number two, while you're working towards it, if you're making good progress. The main takeaway from setting objectives and key results is that shorter term, I can track my progress and reevaluate if I need to in order to reach my longer term goals. If this sounds like a lot to keep track of, don't worry, I'm still gonna share the tool for doing that with you in just a bit, plus the number one tip I have for success. But first, I need to explain one last concept for the periods shorter than one year and one month. Yo, paper chasing, cause I'm always chasing that paper. <laughs> this is where it gets real. Everyone has goals, lots of people have good ideas, really great ideas, but when it comes down to it, how many of us actually take action? Not many. That's what this final section is about. It's about the day-to-day -day things you do, the small decisions that you make, the decision you make right after this video is over to take the action to type out your plans or just to scroll on your phone, the decision you make to learn to write one line of code this evening or to watch Netflix. When you're looking at goals for about two weeks or less, that's where your habits really come into play. Ideally, your habits should help you toward your longer term goals. It's because habits are things you habitually do, and that means that it's easy for you to do. There's less like thinking in your head when you're doing them. If you have a three month goal of losing 10 pounds, it's probably not a good habit to come home and eat a tub of ice cream and watch Netflix every day after work or school. It's probably a good habit to set your gym clothes out by your door before you leave for work in the morning so that when you come home, it makes it easier to go to the gym. It's these small things, these small habits that add up to big things. But I think that because we don't have a good sense of the bigger picture, our long-term life goals, and tying those back to our day-to-day -day actions, our habits, coupled with the fact that most of us aren't even aware of our habits, we lose sight of how the day-to-day -day is affecting our progress towards the things we really want in life. If you do want a tool that can help solve both of those problems, it can help organize your long-term goals and tie them back to the day-to-day -day actions. I made a tool that does just that. And the cool thing is, it's just a Google Sheet. I made a template so that you can write down your life goals, three to five year goals, one year goals, three month goals, and then daily goals. And the daily goals are just habits that you want to make for just two weeks. This is actually an adapted version of the Habit Tracker Google Sheet that I made a video about that you can watch here. But I did promise you the number one tip that helped me succeed in life. This tip comes from a quote by Steve Jobs in his commencement speech at Stanford. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. I take that to mean that even if you aren't sure, you still have to take action. You might not be 100% sure that your habits 
for the next two weeks will get you to your long-term goal. Like, I don't know if making one video a week will get me to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, but it's my best guess and I know that it's in my control to work on them for an hour per day. And when I have objectives and key results that I can quantitatively measure and keep track of my habits and why I might not be doing those habits in a habit tracker and take notes on this, I can review it at the end of the period and connect the dots then. And by taking the actions, making the dots, only then can you learn from them and connect them. So set goals that allow you to do the things day to day that make you feel fulfilled. For me, a big part of that is using my strengths, the things I like and I'm good at, the things that I flow with and I vibe with, use those things to help other people use their strengths to do the same. I believe that I can do that with videos like this and with data-driven tools like the Habit Tracker and the Life Planner here. So if you wanna follow me on that journey, please consider subscribing. And if you got anything out of this video, please give it a like to support the channel. Also, if you have any suggestions for videos that you wanna see, suggestions for improvements to the Habit Tracker or Life Planner, or any questions at all, leave a comment down below. For the first few people, I'm even willing to go as far as setting up like a video chat with you to help you use the Habit Tracker or life planner. Also, if you don't want to do this alone, I started a Facebook group for other habit trackers, which I linked in the description so that we can build a community of people helping each other achieve their goals. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.